Hi, my name is Robert Peake. I am doing this video as a reflection for English 101. So currently I am studying mechanical engineering. Hopefully that will all go good. And so as a learner, I'm a visual and auditory learner, meaning I like to see pictures of what I'm learning and then have someone explain it to me in a kind of going along with the picture, but they can also deviate. That helps me learn. So what I found out about myself as a researcher is I like to take a lot of time with my research. So like with the annotated bibs, I enjoyed doing those because I knew they would work towards my final project. So when I was doing research, a big important factor to me was I wanted the top, the source of the research to be valid and applicable. So one of the big, biggest things I would look for when doing the annotated bibs was the name of the journal that it came out of. Because if it came out of a journal that seemed kind of out of place or not so reliable, it, the source itself was probably not reliable. So, and then like I said, I was able to use a majority of my annotated bibs in Project 4, which really saved me a lot of time in the long run. So for pro, I decided to include projects 1, 3, and then I had to include 4. So project 1 was the narrative I personally wrote about a trip I made with some of my buddies over Thanksgiving break pre earlier this last semester. And the purpose was to describe how you communicated with each other using kind of analyzing your rhetorical situation. So with that, it was speaking didn't work because we couldn't hear each other over the trucks. So we had to use a lot of hand signals and body language to convey like, hey, you're going to hit that rock and so on and so forth. I enjoyed writing this paper the most out of all of the papers because I had a personal connection and I was actively engaged with this. And so before the peer review draft, I wrote about three drafts just before class because the first one I would ramble on, just kind of get my thoughts on the paper and then go from there. And I was able to refine those and figure out what parts needed to be included, what could be deleted, and I went from there. So with Project 3, that was the synthesis paper where we looked at the two authors. One of them thought writing was a very concrete process where you had to follow the specific rules, and if you deviated from those, your writing was pointless. And then the other, who was a little bit, quite a bit more lenient, and thought that writing was a very fluid process and it should be adapted to your own style of speaking. So synthesizing is a very important part of writing. Without synthesis, writing kind of loses a deeper meaning in my feeling. So having that extra practice was just invaluable because, yeah. So project four was an address to an issue. So the personal issue I chose was fishing conservation. Growing up, I enjoyed fishing a bunch, and it was just kind of a natural chain for me to choose that topic to talk about. So, the hardest part about this argument was tailoring the argument to my audience. In this case, I chose somebody at the Washington Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. And we just kind of, the way I had to do it was I tailored it to focus on future generations. Because that's an argument I hear a lot, just personally about the fishing and wildlife aspect of everything is I want my kid to be able to go fish so I included that quite a bit so I included education but that was the first paper I ever wrote where I had a specific person I was writing to so that I felt was very valuable and I was actually pretty proud of myself for how I did so as I continue writing I need to mainly become a better revisor I don't put quite enough time into it it's I can do it and I get it done, but it doesn't come as natural and easily as to me as I would like it to. So the best thing I can do is just work on that and figure out the better methods to do that. So thank you.